Come with me as I journey down the river for an adventure I hope you enjoy. As the River Tame, a tributary of the River Trent, and the Goit that flows from the Pennines converge in Stockport Town Centre, I am the River Mersey. I am 110 kilometres long, but the journey I will take you on will be much shorter. I'm going to show you how I have changed over the decades from being one of the most polluted rivers in the northwest of England to now being one of the cleanest. I will explain and show how once where wildlife was barren, new species and animals start to investigate and make me their home. I have witnessed so many changes along the banks of my body, the main one being the building of the viaduct, which was built and opened in 1840. I had lost count at 11 million bricks. I'm sure there's more, but who knows? I'm a river, I can't count. The first mill in Stockport was opened in 1730. It was a silk mill and was one of the first to be opened in the North West. It used my strength of force to power its looms. As I start to leave Stockport, the Weir Mill comes into view on the left hand side. The noise that it produced used to deafen me, but now I'm so much happier it's gone and I can listen to the song of the Common Dipper. The Common Dipper, once associated with the Peak District and the wooded areas, is now becoming a more common sight along my banks. Dippers have a gland just above their tail. It contains waterproof oils. This allows the dipper to maintain a waterproof protection on their coat, ideal for them to hunt. As dawn breaks, one dipper sings for the morning chorus. Another dipper can be seen feeding before moving on for the day ahead. The pollution has long gone and in its place in the summertime, new visitors come to use the disused walls of the industries that once used me. Early in the morning, I am now used as a Victorian bath for families of goldfinches who meet along my banks in small pools, having an early morning dip before setting off for the day looking for food and looking after their young. Sometimes though, intruders try and get in on this Victorian bath. My one smooth pathway has been interrupted by the making of man-made weirs to help produce more power. Look closely though, all around there is wildlife and things that surprise you, but you do have to look very carefully. Even in my bleakness, I can still see species using me for food or shelter. Just look closely along the banks. A white-tailed bumblebee uses the flowers growing at my sides looking for pollen. A black cat quietly looking at the black currants for a tasty morsel. And of course, everybody's favorite species, the rat, also having a harvest enjoying the abundance of blackberries but which blackberry to choose along the man-made sides of my bank holes appear not just any old holes but holes that in the past would have allowed pollutants to be added to my precious water. Pollutants like lead and mercury. Oh, wasn't expecting to see that today. This rather elusive creature is an American mink. You have to wonder why they are here. Could they have been used for the hat works that was further upstream? I remember when there was one bridge across me, now there's two. 
one for cars and one for people. But what's that? A family of kingfishers feeding, a very rare sight along my banks. A father feeding his juvenile offspring, making sure he makes it through to winter. Look at the iridescent blue. The kingfisher's territory covers the area from the start of my story to its end. Under my surface, small fry swim against the current, trying to avoid the kingfisher's gaze. The parents look on attentively. As the width of the river widens and my pace slows down, I take a moment to remember the industries that you can still see the remnants of along my banks. The power of water was the influence for man to use me as a form of power. Flying ants enjoy the clover, looking for a tasty meal so they can continue their flight onwards. The dippers have an extraordinary adaption which helps them see underwater. They have a third eyelid which is helpful in looking for prey. Wonder what he's catching. Maybe it's the caddis fly or the black fly larvae. The female dipper demonstrates how to make the most of the food beneath my surface to her youngster born a couple of months ago. Mayfly could be a tasty snack. Maybe this one could be next. Dad reminds them he also needs feeding. The second weir must be a good hiding place for fish as this cormorant is a regular visitor here. The further away from Stockport I travel, bushes and trees start to cover up the banks, showing no sign of the previous industries that used to align me. It allows for a variety of species to live within and on me. Dead trees along my banks allow the tree creeper to search for insects and spiders that hide within the dead bark. A damselfly rests, but with an ulterior motive looking for the next meal. The green bridge signals the widening of my path. Sometimes the territories cover three to five kilometres in the summer when the male shares the territory with the breeding female. Using fallen trees, he searches from above into my depth for fish. What may seem like yoga to you and I is the way the kingfisher applies a waterproof wax from his preen gland to his feathers. This enables him to have waterproof feathers for hunting. To continue my journey, the bird calls are interrupted by the rushing of traffic across the M60 motorway bridge. This doesn't stop two cormorants resting on tree stumps or the kingfisher from diving for food. Remarkably, as I travel beneath the bridge, the traffic noise drastically reduces. That is, until I reach the other end. As I become shallower, it is my noise that everyone can hear over the bird song. Littered along my banks, protruding sticks and branches become perches for birds like the kingfishers who need to preen their feathers. Preening is another way to coat the feathers in waxy oils. He uses his bill to draw individual feathers through his beak. This then coats the feathers ready for him to go fishing. Who's this knocking at my door? Wait, I don't have any doors. The lesser spotted woodpecker uses tall dead branches to survey his territory. He calls to let his family know he is nearby. The old abandoned support wall of the Heat and Mersey Railway, which was decommissioned in the 1960s, has become the breeding grounds for new vegetation and a place for birds and animals to live. including the heron searching for food. My flora-covered banks provide a protected environment for parents to keep their young safe from predators who cannot access my shoreline. During the summer months when my banks are filled with different flora, butterflies and other insects use their coverage to rest away from the sight of predators. The last weir on my short journey was built to support the bleach work factory. 
Wood was needed for the drying process until 1803, when steam engines took over. Man-made structures are used as trees because on this part of the bank, few mature trees grow. Animals have adapted to what I can provide. The factory may be long gone, but evidence of its existence is all around. As this journey of 4.1 kilometres starts to come to an end, changes in the landscape can be seen. No longer am I lined with bushes and trees to keep wildlife safe. Swifts and sand martins who have travelled from the African continent take advantage of the insects emerging from the gentle ripples to enjoy a feast. My uses as a river are complex and interchangeable. With human intervention, I am continually evolving. Who knows what I will be like in the coming years? The sand martins use the soft sandy soils to excavate a tunnel up to two metres deep to raise their young. Once they are ready to fledge, some take more encouragement than others to leave the comfort and security of their nest. As dusk falls, most of the wildlife are sound asleep. Common pipistrels and Orbentans bats navigate the dusk sky in search for food. Old barns and tree holes found along the river are used as roosts.